Okay, so OpenAI, right. Their big dev day just wrapped up, and man, people are going kind of crazy online about this new real-time API they dropped. Yeah, a lot of buzz going around. Yeah, and like people are even using the P word. Paradigm shift. Paradigm shift, exactly. Is it really like that big of a deal, though? It's definitely, yeah, it's a big deal. It's a significant leap forward, I'd say. To really understand why, though, Mm -hmm. I think it's useful to remember where AI has been up until this point, right? Right. So like until recently, AI has mostly been about processing information that we give it, right? Like text, images, that kind of thing. Yeah. This API, though, uh, it lets AI interact with the world, Mm -hmm. like in real time. Yeah. And that opens up a whole world of possibilities that we just haven't really even begun to explore. So it's not just reacting, it's actually acting. Exactly. Okay. Think of it this way, right? Like imagine you're trying to get information from a more traditional AI. You ask a question, it goes and searches some massive database Mm -hmm. and then gives you an answer, right? Right. This API is more like having a conversation with someone who can not only access all of that information, all that data, but also act on it, like immediately, (laughs) in real time. And they actually showed this off, right? Something about strawberry. Right, right. During the Dev Day demo, they had their AI assistant actually make a phone call, Mm -hmm. like live, in front of everyone. Oh, wow. To order 400 chocolate-covered strawberries. And it wasn't some pre-recorded thing either. It was the AI actually navigating the entire conversation in the moment. See, that's what like throws me, right, because we've all gotten so used to things like Alexa and Siri and stuff, but this feels different. It is different. Think about what that demo actually represents, right? Mm. Because it wasn't just about understanding speech. It understood the entire context, all the little nuances of an actual phone call, and then interacted with another service, a bakery in this case, to actually make something happen in the real world. So it's not just that it can order strawberries. It's that it understood the entire process of ordering strawberries, like figuring out who to call, what to say. Exactly. Wild. Yeah, and that's a capability that has, you know, like much broader implications than just satisfying someone's craving for something sweet. Okay, so I'm starting to get that this is a big deal. But for those of us who aren't, you know, coding wizards or whatever, what does it actually mean for like everyday life? What are we going to see change because of this? Well, think about all of those everyday tasks that you do online Hmm. or through apps, like booking a flight or ordering groceries or even just scheduling appointments. This API has the potential to completely automate all of that. And not through those clunky interfaces we're all used to, but through natural intuitive interaction. So no more spending an hour on hold with customer service. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. But it goes even further than that, honestly, because it's not just about replacing these processes that already exist. It's about creating entirely new possibilities that we haven't even thought of yet. Like what? Well, let's stick with that travel booking example, right? Okay. So imagine you're planning a trip and your flight gets delayed. Currently, you'd probably be scrambling to change your hotel reservation. Maybe you miss out on dinner reservations. It's a whole thing. But with this API, you could have like an AI travel agent working behind the scenes. Okay. Constantly monitoring your itinerary and proactively adjusting everything in real time based on whatever changes come up. Wow. So it's like having a personal assistant who's also a logistics expert. Right. That's pretty mind-blowing. And that's just one example. I mean, OpenAI themselves have talked about how this real-time capability combined with their existing AI models could completely revolutionize fields like healthcare, education, even scientific research. It almost feels like we're at this tipping point now where AI is shifting from something that helps us do things to something that actually just starts doing things for us like autonomously. That's a good way to put it, yeah. And OpenAI, to their credit, they seem to understand that this is a big responsibility, this power. They've emphasized that this technology is meant to empower developers, to give them the tools to build the next generation of AI-powered applications. So they're not just going to, like, hoard this amazing tech for themselves. No, No. And that's actually one of the most exciting things about this whole announcement, in my opinion. They've created what I call an API playground which is basically a space where any developer can just go in and experiment with the real-time API building and testing their own applications. So it's like they're saying, here's the Lego set, go build something amazing. Exactly. And because it's an open API, anyone can potentially access it and start building. That's pretty cool. But what kind of building are we talking about here? Like, is this just going to lead to fancier versions of Siri or Alexa? It's so much more than that. We're talking about AI that can work with data in a way that was previously like 
unimaginable. Think about something called structured outputs, right? Imagine you ask your AI to plan a trip to Rome. Instead of just spitting back a list of websites at you, it gives you a totally comprehensive, detailed itinerary, organized by day with your flights, your hotel bookings, even restaurant recommendations, all laid out in a format you can easily use and modify. So it understands not just the information, but how to organize it in a way that makes sense to us. Exactly. Wow. It's about making AI output useful and actionable, not just a wall of text. And then there's this concept of function calling. Okay, I'll buy. What's function calling? So uh, think of functions as kind of like actions that an application can perform. Mm -hmm. With function calling, you're basically giving the AI the ability to interact with those actions directly. So instead of just giving me like information about flights to Rome, it could actually book the flight for me. Exactly. Or um, let's say you're looking for a recipe, right? Okay. A traditional AI might give you a list of links. But with function calling, the AI could actually go into a recipe app find exactly what you're looking for, and even like add all the ingredients to your online shopping cart. Okay, now we're talking. This is starting to feel like that future we always see in movies where you just tell your AI what you want and it just, and want. And it just like makes it happen. And we're getting closer all the time. Yeah. One of the things that makes this real-time API so powerful is how it combines with OpenAI's existing language models. Mm. You know, those models have been trained on just massive, massive amounts of text data. So they already have a really good understanding of language and concepts. So it's not just that they can follow instructions. They can actually, like, understand what you're asking in a much more human-like way. Precisely. And that ability to understand natural language mm -hmm. combined with the real-time processing and action-taking of the API it opens up some really, really interesting possibilities. Okay, I have to ask, and maybe this is getting a little too like sci-fi for some people, but are we talking about AI that can actually think for itself, like make mm. decisions, solve problems without being, you know, explicitly programmed for every single scenario? That's a question a lot of people are asking these days, and it kind of gets at the heart of what we call artificial general intelligence or AGI. AGI. Yeah. We're not quite there yet, to be clear, but the advancements we're seeing with this API are definitely steps in that direction. So AGI is like the holy grail of AI research. In a way, yeah. I mean, AGI refers to artificial intelligence that actually has the ability to understand, learn, and apply knowledge across a whole bunch of different tasks, pretty much like a human can. Okay. Yeah. And is this real-time API bringing us closer to that? It's definitely a significant step forward That's because... Right. Because it allows AI to finally move beyond just static data and actually interact with this dynamic world in a way that, honestly, we just haven't seen before. Imagine, like, for example, right? Yeah. An AI that can actually learn from its experiences in real time, right? Mm -hmm. Adapting its behavior and improving its performance all on its own over time. Okay, so I'm trying to, like, wrap my head around this. We're not just talking about AI that can, like, book your flights or make you dinner reservations. We're talking about AI that could potentially, like learn to be a better travel agent or a more creative chef. Exactly. And while those might seem like relatively, you know, simple examples, the underlying capabilities here have the potential to completely revolutionize much more complex fields. Like what? Well, take something like scientific research, okay. right? Imagine AI that can not only analyze data, but also design and conduct experiments in real time, adapting its approach as it gets results, yeah. potentially making discoveries much, much faster than humans ever could. That's kind of amazing, but also a little, I don't know, intimidating. Like if AI can do all of this, what does that even mean for us, for our jobs, our future? Those are really, really important questions. And honestly, they're questions that we need to be asking ourselves more and more as this technology continues to evolve. One of the things that OpenAI has emphasized is, you know, the importance of responsible development with this technology, of making sure that these advancements actually benefit humanity as a whole. So it's not just about building cool technology for the sake of it. It's about actually thinking about the potential consequences, both good and bad. Exactly. And that's a responsibility that falls not just on the shoulders of companies like OpenAI, it falls on all of us. Yeah. As we're kind of entering this new era of AI, we really need to be having like very open and honest conversations about the kind of future we want to create with this tech. So it's not just about the code itself, it's about the conversation happening around the code. Precisely. 
we need to be thinking about the ethical implications, the societal impact, and just generally making sure that these technologies are developed and deployed in a way that actually aligns with our values as humans. Okay, so how do we do that? Where do we even begin to have these conversations when things are moving so fast? It feels like the train's already leaving the station, you know? You're right. The pace of progress can be completely overwhelming, but that's all the more reason to really start talking about these issues now, I think. And it's not just about having these conversations among like experts and policymakers either. It needs to be a broader discussion. Absolutely. We need to be engaging with the public, educating people about what AI is, how it works and what it can do, both good and bad, because ultimately the future of AI is not something that will be decided just by, you know, a handful of people in Silicon Valley. It's something we're all going to have a stake in. Exactly. The choices we make today, the conversations we have right now, they will directly shape the role that AI plays in our lives for generations to come. It's almost like we're at this like crossroads where we have the opportunity to decide right now what this partnership with AI actually looks like. And it's not just about what AI can do for us, but what we want to do with it. I couldn't have put it better myself. So, like, if we are at this crossroads, what paths are we even choosing between here? What does this future with AI actually look like, you know, practically? Yeah, that's the million dollar question, right? And yeah. the exciting thing, well, I guess the exciting A and D daunting thing is that there isn't just one answer. You know, the future mm -hmm. of AI isn't some predetermined thing. It's something that we are all actively shaping every single day with the decisions we make and the applications we build. Okay, so no crystal ball predictions for us. No Terminator scenarios versus like utopian robot paradises. Uh-huh. I'm afraid not, no. Yeah. But what we can do is look at the potential impact of this technology on different parts of our lives. Like take healthcare, for example. Okay. Imagine a world where AI is helping doctors to diagnose diseases earlier and more accurately than ever before, or personalizing treatment plans for patients based on like their unique genetic makeup or their lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that sounds, you know, pretty promising, but I also can't help to think about all those sci-fi movies where the AI takes over and starts making decisions for us. I get that. I totally get that. And it's a valid concern for sure, but it's important to remember that at the end of the day, AI is a tool, right? And like any tool, its impact really just depends on how we choose to use it. The key here is making sure that we keep AI under human control, that it helps us and augments our capabilities rather than trying to replace our judgment entirely. So how do we make sure that happens then? Well, it's a multifaceted challenge for sure. It's going to require, you know, researchers and policymakers and developers and even the public all working together. I think we need to start by establishing some really clear ethical guidelines for AI development, you know, making sure that these systems are being designed with things like safety and transparency and human well-being at the forefront. And I imagine education is a big part of this too, right? Like right. we need to make sure that people really understand what AI is and how it actually works so that they can meaningfully participate in this conversation. Absolutely. The more people understand about AI, the better equipped we'll all be to, you know, navigate its complexities and hopefully harness its potential for good. It's a lot to think about. Mm. But I got to say, for all the unknowns, there's also this, like, real sense of possibility here. Like, we really are on the cusp of something truly transformative for society. I agree. I completely agree. This real-time API from OpenAI, it's a lot more than just some technological advancement, right? It's a catalyst for innovation across honestly, almost every industry. It's like mm -hmm. a glimpse into a future where AI isn't just something that we interact with, but something that actually empowers us as humans to achieve more than we ever thought possible. It's a future I'm pretty excited to be a part of, honestly. And yeah. for everyone listening, just remember, this is a conversation that needs all of our voices. So stay curious, stay informed, and let's build this future together.